Hello, welcome to Game On, the show with Gaming Tourette. Woohoo! Coming up. Funky Kong. Suryokin. Coming up. Team Deathmatch. Coming up. This week in our shiny, shiny, overdue video game BAFTA awards show special. And the BAFTA goes to... All the backstage action from the winner's room. Lara Croft. Charlie Brooker loses faith in himself. No, that's a rubbish answer. And after failing to become Robbie Williams, Ollie Murs recalibrates his career role model. Oh, I don't know. Homer Simpson. Also this week, we cook up a much needed Eve fix with a generous injection of Bioshock 2 DLC. And plunge into the murky origami infested waters of heavy rain. I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. First, though, we rarely get to dig out our suits here at Game On, only really using them for the odd family dinner, funeral for a friend and court appearances for public indecency. Last week, though, presented us with a golden opportunity to get suited and booted, all in the name of gaming, the video game BAFTAs. Couple of mysteries, though. Why are we reporting this days after the event? And where on earth were you? So it's the biggest night in the gaming calendar, the BAFTAs, and I can't find Nathaniel. Um... Nathaniel! Never mind, I'm sure he'll turn up somewhere. Let's find out who won. It was a night of glitz, glamour, and thinly veiled sarcasm. Uh, now, what brings you down here tonight? Um, well, I don't know if you know, but it's the BAFTA Video Game Awards are here tonight. Going into the sixth annual video game BAFTAs, many were talking as though the night's big winner was a foregone conclusion. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. But despite having a whacking nine nominations, Activision's Baby, the biggest selling game of the decade, practically went home empty handed. It picked up the Game Award, the only one voted for by fans, proving its popularity with the punters, but apart from that, the evening was one giant cod snub. And the BAFTA goes to... Batman Arkham Asylum. Instead, this year's BAFTAs truly belong to UK dev team Rocksteady and the mysterious Cape Crusader. The stealthy, atmospheric smash that was Batman Arkham Asylum picked up best game and best gameplay, handing two massive accolades to a British developer over some massive international competition. <laughs> Rather than resting on their laurels though, they're immediately setting their sights on the future. Um, obviously we're um, hard at work on Batman 2, um, we're really, really excited about that and we're excited about um, progressing um, the um, Batman story, the Batman Arkham story, um, and bringing bigger and better things to the game. I know where the stone is. Pray that he is not bluffing. The other big winner on the night came in the form of a PS3 exclusive, specifically Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Developed by Naughty Dog Studios, the sequel to Drake's Fortune carried off four awards in total. They were action, story and character, best use of audio and best original score. Quite understandably, the guys from Naughty Dog hit the press room with a bit of a swagger. Where's the bling? We uh, had to put it down. Yeah, it was, it was too heavy, like our arms couldn't take it anymore. But of course, it wouldn't be a games awards show without at least one small independent development team. And this year it was the turn of Team Butterfly as makers of Shrunk, who also won the Game On Award for most unintelligible answer of the night. They're we all really good. <laughs> they're all really fantastic. Yeah. yeah, they're fantastic teams. We were really surprised if we won. What was that? No idea. That... So go on then, where were you? I don't want to talk about it. I can't talk about it, but I did take a couple of pictures. That's the most disturbing thing I've ever seen. Fortunately though, I had a really good time at the BAFTAs. I made loads of celebrity friends, many more than you did at the Oscars. Gary Busey? Wasn't there, but there were plenty of good names and I asked them all who they'd vote for in the election. Really? That sounds very boring. If the candidate list was any computer game character ever. I work with, with, with the government, so uh, I don't upset anyone. <laughs> I think that Luigi actually is David Cameron. So, I think it's done. My work here is done. Larry the Lounge Lizard. 
which was kind of, you had to take this very odd man and make him chat people up. It was very slow. And I kind of see David Cameron as a bit of a Larry the Lounge wizard. Oh, I think I love Assassin's Creed too. And I just think there's something very, you know, he's, he's very loyal, he's very honest. If he could be, you know, Prime Minister, I think those qualities, loyalty, honesty, I think it's sort of the old, old school mentality, really. He has killed quite a lot of people, though. Well, minus the killing, of course. Lara Croft. Um, do you really need to know why? Not really. I mean, God bless Gordon Brown, but, you know, the man looks like a sort of wounded bear a lot of the time. I'd happily sort of watch Prime Minister's Question Times. I think you'd find a lot of younger men particularly wanting to follow politics were it Lara Croft and her assets. It's less of a cabinet, more of a rack. No, <laughs> that was good. That wasn't bad, was it? Don't leave me hanging, come on, that was nice. Pac-Man? <laughs> I don't know, just because it would be really weird seeing him on the banknotes in, in, in several hundred years' time. No, that's a rubbish answer. Minor Willy from Manic Miner and Jet Set Willy, just because it would be, well, he's a two-dimensional figure. Much like whoever else gets into Downing Street. There's some political satire for you. Oh, God, I make myself feel sick. I think it'd have to be Super Mario for a bit of fun. Yoda. OK. <laughs> I suppose he is wise. Yeah, he is, exactly. He's wise, he's little. Probably um, Wario. <laughs> yeah. He'd be great, yeah. I don't know. Homer Simpson. The Master Chief. Spartan 117. Why's that? He's effectively a silent killing machine. He wouldn't hold up well in debate. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the point. You know, it's like, right, we need a better health service. We need to get rid of middle management and get doctors and nurses back into power. Well, excuse me, Prime Minister, but I think you're wrong. Pulls out, you know, a battle rifle. Bosh, gone. So are you saying you want to assassinate all middle management in the NHS? Yeah, I think I am. We'd just like to state that Game On in no way supports the execution of any NHS employees. We love you all very dearly and would like you to bear that in mind should either of us ever require urgent medical attention. Ralph Little, on the other hand, is all yours. Yeah, resuscitate, don't resuscitate, balls in your court. I'll expect letters. So leaving the Bavgas behind, let's move on to something a bit more cheerful. Well, I say cheerful, more kind of brooding and intense, really. Yeah, yeah pretty dark, if anything. Mm, sinister in portions. Yeah, not cheerful at all. About as cheerful as norovirus. <laughs> anyway, it's heavy rain. How far would you be willing to go for love? Would you walk around a lot, push various buttons, get very wet and slightly down as your character descends into a dark depression despite your best efforts. If so, welcome to the world of heavy rain. Sony's latest PlayStation 3 exclusive is a remarkable computer game. Drenched in melodrama and emotion from the pathetic fallacy of the title to the rich colour and the light that permeates each scene, the sweeping score and intriguing plot ultimately immerses the gamer in an intricately elaborate neo-noir murder mystery. But what does that actually mean and is it fun to play? Heavy Rain is a slow burner, arguably quite boring at first, as the story unravels, the action intensifies and you begin to invest in the characters you're playing, the result is a rich and rewarding gameplay experience. Give me what you got in the register. Don't try anything. Open the register, you dumb Put the money on the counter. As for the plot, I don't want to give away too much, but I will say you control a handful of characters switching from chapter to chapter in the hunt for the mysterious origami killer. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. Good evening. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I'd like a room. Along your way, you will encounter prostitutes, Dancing, private hey, dicks, psychologists hey, and potential serial killers as each narrative progresses towards a killer climax. Every cop in the city on his ass, so that if he moves, we know about it. You're gonna die, you son of a bitch! The 
gameplay is simple and intuitive. As you wander throughout the world, button prompts regularly appear on the screen, offering options on what to do, say or even consider your decisions directly affecting the outcome of the game. You may know something that could help save other people's lives. I was unable to save the life of my own son. The result, on the whole, is a tactile and responsive game focusing on reaction, emotion and thought, and allowing you to engage with your characters on an intimate level. Mr. Shelby, I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. But I can see now that I was wrong. Which balloon would you like, Jason? Uh, the red one. As for negatives, the script is occasionally awkward, there are some problems associated with the turn to page 14 plotting process, and the old limitation frustrations often crop up. Why can't I open this door? Why can't I interact with this guy? Also, for all its freedom of choice, you often wonder just how much your decisions actually affect the outcome of the game, while this certainly improves as you progress. Oh, you really had me scared. In conclusion, despite inevitable frustrations and restrictions, and the feeling early on you're controlling an elaborate Tamagotchi, Heavy Rain is a rich and involving game that delivers serious reward on your early investment. If you're after fast and fun, stick with your first-person shooters, but if you're looking for a deeper, richer, more cinematic gameplay experience, Heavy Rain is a beautifully crafted game that might just take your breath away. That went quite well, didn't it? Shut up. Everything I did, I did for love. Next up, as the Beatles once sang, DLC, my game's better than it used to be. Not sure those were the words, but carry on. Bioshock 2 still enthralling me. Oh, DLC, how I love thee. You spent quite a lot of time on that. Suddenly. <laughs> Dead ball. Yeah, we've dealt with the last of the Little Sisters and seen Subject Delta through to the end. But in the multiplayer world, the battle rages on. The Sinclair Solutions multiplayer pack is the first of three promised dollops of DLC for the 2K title, bringing you two new characters, new masks, trials and upgrades, but most importantly, rank increases to 50. Presumably so as not to alienate those who haven't invested, the package doesn't change the core experience very much, but serves to broaden the variety of an already diverse multiplayer experience. Louis McGrath and Oscar Cal Racker are the two new characters in the mix. Career criminal Louis has fast become my weapon of choice, oozing charisma where other characters are slightly shallow. Given Bioshock 2 is a game that goes to such efforts to be charismatic, it requires a strong roster more than any other title. Think how easily games like Call of Duty get away with generic characters, and you grow to really appreciate the effort 2K put into the multiplayer. The Sinclair Solutions Pack is available for a measly fiver on PlayStation Network, or around 400 Microsoft points, and we reckon for the depth it adds, it's pretty good value. That's all from us for this week. We're off to get Johnny some treatment. GoldenEye 007 four-player multiplayer facility slappers only license to kill. Yeah, more gaming gumption next week. Hello, welcome to Game On, the show with gaming Tourette. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say that. Coming up. Funky Kong. I might have to have a couple of bashes at this because I can't see. It's fine. <sighs> anyway, it's heavy Sorry, rain. I giggled. <sighs> <sighs> okay, we've just made that up. So, what are you going to do with the statues now that you've won them? Where are they going? They are going in the mail to get back to the states, <laughs> so we don't have to carry them on the plane. Yeah, I hope you're sending them recorded because they might go. <laughs> no, that's a bit silly, isn't it? Hello, welcome to Game On the Show with Gaming Tourette. Woohoo! That's coming Funky up. Kong. Coming Charlie up. Coming up. Team Deathmatch. Coming up. <laughs>